Good afternoon. I am here today. I'm Emily, the Jet Setting Fashionista, and I'm really excited to be here with my friend, Chef Dustin Vallette. Yes, yes. Of Vallette Hillsburg. We're hanging on the you, patio having rosé. Come on, this is I not mean, a bad day, it's right? It's a really rough wine Wednesday. <laughs> um, so those of you that follow me know that I spend a lot of time in Hillsburg, and basically every single time I'm in Hillsburg, I'm at Vallette. So Dustin and I have gotten to know each other quite well over the years. And I thought it would be fun to sort of bring Dustin's amazing cooking skills together with my friends at Clover. Yep. So this year's actually a really big year for Clover. They're celebrating their 20th anniversary of being American Humane Certified. So what that means is all of the, the cow farmers, they actually have a partner in Healdsburg that, you know, milk the cows and it goes into the Clover cheese and cream we're eating today. So yeah, so all the cows are American Humane certified. They go into the amazing Clover product. It's fantastic. So Dustin, why don't you tell us what you've got in store for us today? Absolutely. So today we're doing a mac and cheese. Now, everyone's had mac and cheese. This is my version. I have two little beautiful daughters at home and I love to make mac and cheese for them. But we don't make all this fancy like roux, bechamel. I make the simple version. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make two different kinds of pasta today, two different kinds of mac and cheese. We're making the kids version, for my yeah. little daughters, and then we're gonna make the adult version for us. So what we're doing is first we have our pasta. So a lot of times when you think about macaroni, you think about like the elbow macaroni you buy at Safeway, right? And what elbow macaroni looks like, it kind of looks like this, right? Yep. So what we did is we made a fresh bucatini. So bucatini is an Italian style pasta. It has a two oh, hole inside, it looks like a, like a little tube. And the cool part is it looks cool <laughs> besides and that. And it tastes good. And it tastes really good. <laughs> but also like fresh pasta, I think is just 10 times better than dried pasta. Now that being said, you can definitely use dried pasta, elbow macaroni, you can use rigatoni, you can use celentini, celentini, cavatappi, all these different shapes out there. But this is more about how to make a really simple version of mac and cheese. So first thing we do is we're gonna take our pasta and we're gonna dump this into salted boiling water. Really simple, all we did was just take a little bit of water, add some regular kosher salt, and it adds a little bit of sunny to it. Then we're gonna take a little round-sided copper pan and we're gonna add in just good old-fashioned cream. Ooh. Now, and it's organic secret, cream, let me point out. It is organic cream. And the thing that I love about the clover cream, honestly, is it has a 40% milk fat. So it has more depth of flavor to it. It doesn't have that watery flavor to it. Yep. I use that a lot of times in my house, and we also use it here at the restaurant. Then to make the mac and cheese, we're basically gonna add in cream, sharp cheddar, and pasta, and that's it. Okay. This is like the most simple version you've ever seen of mac and cheese. Now, that's the kids version. For us, we're gonna be all serious. We're gonna use like bacon, cherry tomatoes, amaros cherry tomatoes, some nice little chili threads, and of course, beautiful Australian truffles. So Yum. we're gonna make the adult version and the kids version. But the part I wanna show off is just how simple this is. I mean, this basically we're gonna take cream, cheese, pasta, Within like three minutes, you have Voila. the most healthy version of mac and cheese ever. Yeah, and the girls will love it. Maybe healthy-ish version, actually. Well, <laughs> Let me I think about like that one a little bit. It is healthy because most mac and cheese that I make, you add butter, and this doesn't even have butter in it. No so butter it's got at all. One less fatty ingredient. So it's <laughs> exactly. Like a light version. You're of welcome, mac and, and it works for me. Look at this. Come on, like this is like skinny mac and cheese. Perfect. It's like skinny margarita things all over. You know, we're starting again. Yeah. All right. So we're cooking our pasta. We cook this fresh pasta for about three minutes. Okay. Now it depends how you like your pasta. Some people like to have it more al dente, a little less al dente. I'm an al dente person. Me too. So I'm about two and a half, three minutes in that. Okay. Now the cream takes about the same amount of time. The thing you have to be careful with is you can kind of see how the cream's starting to kind of bubble up right yeah. here. If you put your cream on too high of a heat, it's going to overflow your pot. That always happens to me. Well, that's what you just It's so annoying it. cleaning after I make pasta because the water always <laughs> overflows. Exactly. What we're doing, we're going to chef secrets here, right? The secret one. So you monitor the, the heat level. <laughs> exactly. The adjust the part. Okay. So we're basically turning down the heat. We're reducing the cream by about 50%. And now the pasta, see how we're just basically sitting here. We're just checking to make sure it's not overcooking. We, again, we're going to cook that about two and a half minutes. My little secret on pasta is I take it, my little fancy tweezers, yep. and then I pinch off a little piece. And if you look, you're basically looking for the translucent. See that right there? How you can see that? Yeah. Yep. So basically you're going from a translucent state until you're basically just getting that pasta rehydrated and cooked. Okay. Now dry pasta takes about 15-ish minutes, depending on what, what shape it is. The fresh pasta takes about three minutes. So nice. it's been about three minutes. So we're gonna turn that off. Our cream at the same time is reduced by about 50%. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a nice big handful of this sharp cheddar. I love using the sharp cheddar for this mac and cheese recipe because it has great flavor mm -hmm. to it. Now, a lot of times we'll put pepper inside this, we'll put in like different like spices in this, but this is for my kids, right? Yeah. <laughs> my kids, so my four kids and five-year-olds. Kids don't really like a lot of spice, right? No, no, yeah. they're like the most plain people in the world, which I love. 
So first thing we do is took our cream, reduce it down. We add in our white cheddar. This is basically the mac and cheese base. This is the most simplest essential part of mac and cheese. Cream reduction, cheese, you're good. Now we're gonna take our pasta. I'll show you our little trick. A lot of times, like in my house, I'll just take the, the big pot, I'll go dump it in the sink, use a strainer. In this case, um, we don't have a very good strainer here on the deck. <laughs> I gotta clean it up later. So we're using our very fancy from my house little basket strainer right here. So speaking of the deck, I just want to do a quick little plug, patio plug. So <laughs> patio plug. as you guys know, it's COVID. So everyone's eating outside and staying socially distanced. And Valette just built the most spectacular outdoor patio. Thank you. I don't know, how many does it seat? 35, 40? Uh, yeah, about 30 people, about 20 to 30. Oh, 20 to 30. I actually dined here on Saturday with my dad. It was amazing. Yeah, so it was so fun. So if you have not been here yet, whether you've eaten inside or outside, make sure to make a reservation and come. And you'll probably see me here. And just keep asking Dustin for this mac and cheese recipe. I know, I right? Really we totally to should do that. Menu, and the more we ask, I think the more likely it'll happen. Uh, ish, ish. Potentially. We'll see. <laughs> Potentially. <laughs> Okay, so you saw how we took the cream, we added the cheese into it, yep. we took the pasta. Now, the, cute, the, the the beauty is there's a little bit of starch coming off this pasta. So we're gonna take a little bit of this pasta water and add it back into that. We're gonna put it back on the burner. So that was like not even a tablespoon. About, exactly, it was exactly a tablespoon. Okay, so Good eyes. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna be stirring this pasta. So what's gonna happen is it's gonna pull the starch off the edge of that pasta. If you sit back and you think about like a roux, a roux is butter and flour mixed together. Then you add milk, making it bechamel. And then you add in cheese, making it a Mornay. Yeah. And then you add that into your pasta. It's a classic mac and cheese. So what we're doing is we're doing the helm version, the two pot version. Yep. So the cream is acting kind of like a butter and that rich mouth feel, that texture. The cheese is acting like the cheese. Now, instead of making a roux, we're actually using that starch coming off that fresh pasta to help thicken it. Now, see how all of a sudden, it's kind of hard to see over there, but see how all of a sudden it starts to thicken up? Yeah. That cream, that cheese. So we're just gonna keep flipping this and keep stirring it. In the meantime, we're gonna talk about the kids' version. So the kids' version, really simple. We're okay. gonna take a nice little bowl, and then all we're gonna do is we're gonna toss this one more time. By the way, nice tossing skills. If I did that, I'd like <laughs> splash it over. Uh, that's the magic of, t of TV, just so you guys know. Uh -huh. This is like version 17. The other 16 are like everywhere over there. Just like, don't pan right. Do not pan right. We're in trouble. Um, so first thing we do is we're gonna take our pasta. Again, this is really, really simple. This is literally what my kids love. We're just gonna pick this up and you can see all that cream and cheese mm, kind of coming off that. Yeah, so gooey. So good. So now for me, that's it. I take a little bit of cheese we have over here, right? Let's bring a little bit of fresh yep. cheese, but we're gonna keep this really simple. No colors to it. There's no parsley, nothing. Okay. Now I do make my kids eat carrots with this because oh. I want to make sure they're healthy. So our agreement is you can have the mac and cheese, but I want to have five carrots for every serving so of mac and cheese. My sister does mac and peas. Oh, that's cool. Um, yeah, it's like a Seattle thing, and we do Beecher's mac and cheese with green <laughs> peas. It. I but love I it. I like the carrots, but peas and cheese rhyme. So the yeah, that's like a good it. point. That's yeah. a good point. Cool. Okay, so the kids' version looks amazing. I'm gonna resist having it because I'm gonna be holding up <laughs> the adult version. I love it. All right, so now we do the adult version. So exact same base to it, right? Same thing. The cream, the the nice white cheddar inside of there. Really simple. Now, first thing we do is we're gonna basically start picking up this pasta and turning it. You can use your spoon like your grandma did. I like to pick up the pasta like this, hold it, twist it last second, and then go vertical. Okay. So one more time, we're gonna kind of scoop this up, pick it up right here. We're gonna lay it down, go vertical. It makes this really nice kind of like stack, nice little tower, if you will. And that's also the cool part, I think, about that Pucatini pasta. It's just how cool it looks. All right, so now we're gonna go to the adult version. So first thing we do is we're gonna put on some bacon. This is a bacon made by Journeyman Meat Company. Our neighbors, Pasta's literally great. right here, a the whopping best. 22 feet away. We actually have a guy right there in a Journeyman Meat Company shirt too, it's yeah. hilarious. I actually have to go pick up my Journeyman <laughs> Salumary uh, quarterly shipment after nice. this. Nice, yeah. I love it. All right, so next we have cherry tomatoes. So these are from our garden. We take them, we toss them in olive oil, salt and pepper. We roast them about 25 minutes in the oven. At, at 200. About, yeah, about 200 degrees. What we're I doing like is- I you told me that before. How did I know that? I've used these little, this little trick once before. What you're doing is you get this great concentration of flavor. And the thing I love about the cherry tomato is it has great acidity to it. Great textural kind of pop. Then we're gonna put on a little bit of chili flakes. So, sorry, chili threads. So oh. these little guys are basically espalette peppers that we took and we very thinly julienne and dehydrated. So what kids says, it adds a nice little kind of textural pop back into it. A little bit of heat, but it's not too spicy. Now we're gonna take some Australian truffles. So Australian truffles are really good at this time of the year. 
and we're just gonna basically slice them really thin. There's two ways of doing this. Sometimes I'll do microplaning, and I'll actually microplane the truffles on top. Other times I'll use a truffle slicer and shave them on top. In this case, I'm gonna do this like I do at my house, which is where we take a couple slices of the truffle and we actually just julienne it. So you're doing is you're getting little kind of what we call match sticks yeah. on here. Now we're just gonna sprinkle this little match sticks of truffles on top of this. Beautiful. Dude, that smells so good, doesn't it? Just like that yeah. perfume of the truffles on top. Okay. Now we're is gonna take- truffle? What's truffle, is truffle season no October, November? What's the month? So we're using the Australian truffles right now. So we're probably about, I would say a month away. Okay. Usually around like mid October, okay. beginning November, you start seeing truffles from like Perigord um, from France and that kind of stuff. White truffles are usually mid-November okay. kind of thing. So that's but why these you are use Australian because it's year-round or exactly something? Exactly, well, the okay. season, so the opposite season for us. Okay. So right now they're about six months ahead. Okay. So now we're gonna do just a little bit of espalette, not a lot, just right here on the edge of the plate. So what it does is it adds a little visual kind of contrast back to the dish, but also the other fun part is when you eat this, you have that, the richness from the white cheddar, the richness from the cream, the earthiness from the bacon, earthiness from those truffles, but then you add this espalette, which kind of changed it and makes a nice little textural pop back into mm, it. It's so pretty. So, what do you guys think? How's that? Beautiful. Can you zoom in, take a look at that? Here is our mac and cheese, both kids version and the adults version. The kid version, <laughs> really simple, just good old fashioned white Here, cheddar. I can hold this. Nice, I'll go that way. And then we can't So forget. that's the kids version and then the adults. The adults has the nice bacon inside there, those nice beautiful black truffles, a roasted cherry tomatoes in there, a nice little spice from the espalette and those chili threads. Yeah. And now you have a very hard job. Okay. You have to find out, is this gonna pair better with a rosé, which kind of makes sense because of mac and cheese, or is it gonna pair better with a Pinot Noir because of the truffles and the bacon? This is a okay. very tough choice. So we'll see. So for those of you guys that don't know, Dustin um, has a beautiful wine label. And this Me is too. his rosé of Pinot Noir, which is made by Bob Cabral. Yep. And this is his Pinot Noir, which is also <laughs> made by Bob Cabral. And I've had these wines and they're spectacular. So when we talked about doing this, I was like, can I try the wines and do a pairing? So here we go. It's so, a tough choice. Which one's better, really right? It's a really tough choice. Because like, you think about theoretically a rosé makes more sense than mac and cheese. But when you put the Pinot, it's usually a little too big for mac and cheese. But because you have the truffles, because you have that bacon, because you have all these different savory elements, what happens is it stands up to the actual Pinot itself. So kind of tough choices. We figured let's just do both. Yeah. It's not okay. too shabby. Let me pull the mask down quickly to eat. Take a <laughs> bite. Mm. So what do you think? How is it the rosé? It definitely works with the rosé. It does, right? Plus you have cherry tomatoes in there. So you have this nice bright acidic pop of flavor of the cherry tomatoes. Yeah. And then you got to think about, well, now if we're using like bacon and earthy truffles, that might be more pinot. By the way, I didn't even tell you how delicious this recipe is. <laughs> I went straight to the wine. The essentials, right? Mm. All right, big choice. Here we go. Big decision. I mean, you know, I love everything with Pinot Noir. Yeah. I think they what both work, they but do, I huh? might gravitate towards the rosé. It it's, just it's feels like one. the like perfect pairing. It's tough. It's also hard. I mean, but the thing is, like, the beauty that we try to do here at the restaurant is you know, we really try to keep balance back to dishes. So when we started the wine brand, our little Valette wines, yeah. um, we really wanted to have wine that kind of represented a food kind of concept to it. So mm -hmm. you'll see the wine itself has a little more city to it, a little more balance to it. It doesn't have this big, huge, chewy, overly tannic, you know, structure. It has a lot of depth, but it also has that, it's pretty, little nuances. Oh my God. And they work, works really well yeah. with different kinds so of So speaking of wine, I just want to mention, so um, Valette Pinot Noir, those of you guys that attended Pinots and Plaid in 2019, will be thrilled to hear that Valette Pinot Noir will be at the 2021 20, Pinots and Plaid. Whenever yes. that is, TBD, there's COVID that's sort of getting in the way of the event. <laughs> but I'm super excited. I'm going to have 35 wineries at the next event. And Valette's going to be a part of it. And if we're lucky, it. Dustin will come and do some food. But we'll see Absolutely. about Absolutely. We'll see. In the meantime, this is different kind of Pinot's and Plaid, right? In the yeah. meantime, it's like a bottle of Pinot, a plaid shirt, just sitting there hanging out, and then just relaxing. Yeah. And you can the, the wines we're super excited about, like, they're just popping right now. Bob they're Cabral, beautiful. the winemaker, is fantastic. And this is kind of part of this whole master kind of concept we had. We started Valette 
Sorry for let wines. We have a new restaurant, the Matheson, all going there. Yes, the Matheson. That's so, going to be super opening exciting. very soon, too. Yes, March I love next the year. under construction signs. I was I know, just walking right? around the square. Yes, came out so, good. So, next March, you're saying? March 2021, hopefully? That's our, that's our plan. Okay. You know, construction in the world always uh, changes. But our plans right now is March next year. Um, but it's just, you know, we want to be able to kind of keep Sonoma County going, keep people excited about, you know, the cherry tomatoes are local, the bacon is right here at Journeyman. <clears throat> Amazing food for products. Like, really just kind of showcasing what Sonoma County has to offer and really doing our best to just keep people excited about this beautiful place we call yeah. home. I mean, you know, I love Healdsburg. I'm here every chance I get. So, yes. well, thank you so much for sharing Absolutely. your time, your talent, your beautiful recipe, your wines, your patio. It's really <laughs> all pleasure. about Dustin today and pairing it with the Clover Best products, part. which are so, so oh. delicious. And I don't know about you guys, but I'm going to be eating this and finishing these wines. So thank you so much for joining. I Thank hope you. Um, you were able to make these recipes. And just a reminder, the recipes will be online on my blog, The Jet Setting Fashionista, also on the Clover blog, and also Villette will be sharing it. So you can Absolutely. find it from all, all of the above partners. Absolutely. And you always go check out, we'll throw a little thing there on the, on the video, but you always go check out Villette Healdsburg. We have a lot of our stuff there. VillettWines.com, where our wines are. TheMatson.com, very easy.com. Perfect, everything's, right? yeah, it's just, <laughs> the easy. URL is exactly the name of the company. <laughs> I know, Brilliant. Right? Crazy, yeah. brilliant. Okay. Anyways, guys, enjoy, and seriously, look how simple it was for mac and cheese. Like, so simple and so delicious. The thing there is too, right? Organic cream, organic cheese, really simple, really delicious. Sonoma cow, Sonoma farmer, Sonoma chef. That's it. That's a wrap. All, over. all right, now it's time to eat and drink. All right. <laughs> and up this cheers work stuff, all right? All right, cheers. Thank you.